In this video, we're going to be deriving the small signal model for a BJT transistor. And the small signal model is used as the basis for analyzing the gain of an amplifier. So we're going to derive this by solving a BJT amplifier problem. So we're going to do the derivation using a simple example. So first of all, in order to create an amplifier, you see that this DC, that this AC voltage right here, have to be offset by some value, which is called a bias, so that the transistor doesn't go into saturation or cutoff. So let's go look at this mod, this in LT spice first. So if I look at the voltage right here, you see that the voltage is centered around 2.3 volts and it's going up about a tenth of a volt and down about a tenth of a volt because of what this input is. And then if I look at my output here, you see now it's centered again. This is also biased and so it's biased up to about 5 volts. If I look at the gain here, you see that it is about 0.6 volts peak to peak and we have an input of about 2.2 volts peak to peak so this is a gain of about two and a half to three gain okay so that's what's basically going on so originally we basically had a large signal model so let's look at our large signal model so we had our input voltage we had our bias voltage which is 2.3 volts we had a resistor and our large signal model this is our transistor so here is our base and then here is our dependent current source which is beta IB where this is my IB right there this part is ground, and then this is going up through some collector voltage, which in our example is 1K. And then we have our power supply, which is the 10 volts. Okay, so this voltage right here is just set up and biased up. And we're trying to analyze this loop around here. So remember, this is our base emitter loop with our diode. So if I look at this diode, here is our diode equation. So our diode has this exponential relationship where this is the I of the diode, which in this case is our base current as a function of our VBE. But now what is our VBE? So you can kind of see that we are going to be centered around here somewhere. So this is going to be our VBE. Okay, and then what's going to happen is, is that we're going to be changing, we're going to have a sinusoidal variation in our base emitter. So we create this linear point along here, which is going to create this sinusoidal variation in our base current. So this is called biasing. So this point right here is our bias point, and then we're just going to be varying around the bias point here, and so then that's going to create some bias IB and some variation around that. So what we're trying to do is figure out we need a, we're going to be modeling this linear piece as a resistor because a resistor has a linear relationship. So if I look here, we're going to look at our base current as a function of our VBE. So we're going to go back to our diode equation. So let's look over here. So here is our diode equation. So IB is going to be equal to the IS over beta because this is for, 
So this is our collector current divided by beta to get to our base current. And so we're trying to find, you see our VBE is changing relative to our IB. So we're going to define this resistor here. We're going to call this resistor R pi. So what we see is that R pi is going to be D VBE with respect to my base current. Okay, so then we're going to, this is all, you see this one's in terms of IB. So I'm going to, instead solve for R pi, I'm going to solve for 1 over R pi, which is going to be equal to D I B over D V B E. So now we're just taking this derivative. So I take the derivative of that top one, and then I get 1 over V T times I S over beta e to the v b e over v t. It's kind of nice taking derivatives with exponentials tend to be pretty easy. But then what we see here is that this part right here is exactly the same as this part up here. So therefore that means that this is equal to i b over v t. So what we have is that we have r pi equals vt over ib. Okay, so now what we can do is this is, and so now we're going to come up here and we're going to replace this with a value of r pi. So we're going to be operating around a certain point of our diode so we no longer have a diode. We're just going to model our diode as a resistor which is a value of r pi. The other thing that we want to do is we want to change this from a current controlled current source into a voltage controlled current source. So we're trying to get a voltage controlled current source. So we have, let's look at our signal. So this is our base, this is our collector, and this is our emitter. Now this is our R pi. And what we want to do is we want to do it in terms of this voltage. So we're going to have and we want to change this into some GMV pi. So we're going to do it in terms of a voltage instead of in terms of a current. And so then we just have to solve for the GM. So we're going to do this the same way we did before by looking at what the ratio is. So in this case, GM is equal to the derivative of IC with respect to VBE. So we are going to, our collector current was I S E to the V B E over V T. And then we're just going to take the derivative of this with respect to my base emitter voltage. So again, this is a pretty easy one, just like we did before. We get 1 over V T times I S E to the V B E over V T which again what we see here is that this piece and this piece are the same which means that my GM is equal to IC over VT. And that's the next piece that we have. So then the last part that we want to look at is that if I look at my current as a function of my collector emitter. So when we did our collector emitter, that we went up like this, and then it was pretty flat, but it had a slight slope. And if we back project this slope, 
this point here is VA. So what we end up getting is that IC is actually equal to IS e to the VBE over VT times that slight slope gives us a 1 over VCE over VA. So it has this slight slope here, which is this slight slope along there. And we want to see how the voltage changes, how this current changes with respect to VCE. So then I am going to define this as 1 over RO, which is equal to D VCE of the IC, which is equal to, we're doing the same process again, ISE to the VBE over VT times 1 plus VCE over VA. But now, we're not taking the derivative with respect to the VBE, we're taking the derivative with respect to the VCE. So then this is going to be equal to this IS e to the VBE over VT is now a constant. The one, we take the derivative of a constant, and it becomes zero, and then we just have a one over VA. And just like we did before, this part here is just equal to the IC, so our RO is going to be equal to, remember we have to flip this over, VA over IC. Okay, so now let's put this all together and look at our small signal model. So our small signal model, so we had this, This was our large signal model. This is our base. This is our collector. And then this is our emitter. And so then this is going to transition into, we're going to first come in and we're going to replace our diode with a resistor of value R pi. And then we're going to have our current source which is going to be equal to GMV pi. We're going to have this new resistor, which takes into the, the slope right there. This is my collector. This is my emitter. And this is my base. And this right here is called our pi model, or our small signal model. And if we go to Wikipedia and search for what the hybrid pi model, here is our hybrid pi model right here. So here's our V pi, here's our GM VBE, here's our RO. So you can kind of see this is the model that we just derived, which is the simplified low frequency hybrid pi model for the BJT transistor. And now we have derived our